we are going to implement the interfaces in a class repositories. All that means is that we will create a repository class for each of the interface and in the class we will code the actual logic for each of the methods in the interface. So let's start with country repository. And we can add all these classes in the services folder. So first let's create a class and I'll call it country repository GUI. So in services I'll add another class and call it country repository GUI. And like I mentioned before, I am adding GUI to the end of the class name to visually distinguish it from the repository in the API, which is called country repository. So now we have a country repository GUI in our project. Now the name can be anything at all, it's really up to you, but this is just how I decided to name it. Also note that before we had iCountry repository GUI and that was the interface itself. The leading I letter in front of country repository GUI specified that this was uh, an interface and not a class. This on the other hand is a class that will implement that interface. So to implement the interface, we'll simply bring it in. And now we are implementing iCountry repository GUI interface in our country repository GUI class. You can see that this is underlined and that's because we need to implement those methods from the interface. So I'm going to implement them. So all the dummy methods were imported and we can now start putting in an actual logic. And let's start by showing all countries in getCountries method. So we'll go down here. The method returns a collection of country DTO objects, so let's create a variable for the collection and we can make it a list. So I'm going to delete this and I'll create my list, so it's going to be I enumerable of type country DTO and I'll call it countries and it's going to be my new list of type country DTO. Now since we are going to be calling the API to work with data and to return data, we can wrap everything into a using block and this way we don't have to worry about disposing any garbage objects and C -sharp will do it for us. So I will start a using block. To call the API, we need to use an HTTP client. This is actually a c -sharp class that contains all the methods and properties that we need to make the API calls. So inside of the using, we can declare new HTTP client. So I'll create a variable, I'll call it client and it's going to be an object of HTTP client. Now Visual Studio is complaining because we need to bring in the namespace system.net.http. So how do we actually make the call to API? Well first we need to call the URI that retrieves the data that we need. And to do that we can access base address property of the client object. So inside the using I'm going to start using the properties of the client and the first one is going to be base address. And if I hover over it you can see that it gets or sets the base address of the URI of the internet resource used when sending the request. So this base URI is the same for all of our API calls. Whether we are calling to retrieve authors or books or reviews or anything else, the base URI is the same for all of them. In our case, that is to call the localhost slash API. And after API, we'll have another slash and after that, we'll have the IDs being passed or any other parameters that we need to pass with the URI. But the base is localhost slash API and it's the same for all of our API calls. But first we need to actually find out what the localhost address is. And that's simple, we just need to start the project. But of course right now this wouldn't compile as you can see we have some errors because we're not finished yet. 
So I'm going to comment this out. I'm bringing the throw exception back just to make this work. And now I can run it. And as you already know, we get two browser windows open. The first one that has 404 is our new project. We have nothing coded yet. And the one before that is the API itself. So if I do slash API books, for example, I get the books. So this is our localhost and slash API that we need for our base address. Now your localhost will be something else, mine is 60039, but whatever yours is, simply copy that along with the slash API. So let's close the browser and back to coding. I'm going to uncomment this and bring it back our code. So now I have the base address. So all I have to do is create a new URI with that address. And you can see that it initializes a new instance of the URI class with a specified URI and it's of type string. So it has to be in quotes and I'll paste the HTTP slash localhost 60039 slash API. So now after the API, I'm going to use another slash because without it, if I start adding the parameters, it would simply append to the string rather than using the slash and then all the parameters. So the base address is ready and we are now ready to use it.